actually trust the healthcare provider and purchase whatever it is that's being suggested. This is called supplier-induced demand. And again, it allows providers to sell more than they might have if all of their patients had medical degrees and were able to make informed decisions about what they should purchase. Then we've got the problem of third-party payment. Because health insurance companies fit the bill for healthcare, neither the supplier or the consumer is primarily concerned with how much healthcare is being consumed or at what cost. In fact, both healthcare providers and patients are incentivized to want more healthcare to be provided, whether it's needed or not. Providers make more money and patients, because they don't have medical degrees, err on the side of more is better. Insurance companies try to find ways to realign these incentives, but empirical data shows that this never really works well. It adds substantially to administrative costs, it increases frustration, and simply translates into both providers and consumers trying to game the system. Then we have what's called adverse selection. Insurance pools work very well for the people that are on the needier end of the spectrum, but are terrible value for money for people that are healthier. So the healthier people drop out of the pool, making the average state of health in the pool a little worse. So the shared cost within the pool goes up a little. And again, there will be a cohort left within the pool that are at the healthier end of the spectrum for whom, at the new cost, they are receiving poor value for money and will drop out. And so the average health in the pool goes down slightly and the average cost goes up and so on and so on. And this isn't just theoretical. When you take a step back, countries that rely heavily on private healthcare provision spend a lot more on healthcare at a national and individual level and the overall health outcomes are worse. And of course, people who are not insured or underinsured also live with the fear of unexpected health expenses driving them into poverty. But regardless of whether it is privately provided or state provided healthcare, there are factors that impact on the overall supply and demand for healthcare. Let's take a look at them now. Firstly, factors influencing the demand for healthcare. We've got demographic factors like an aging population. As people get older, they generally need more healthcare. And population growth, more people means more demand. There are epidemiological trends like chronic disease. The rising conditions like diabetes and heart disease means more people need ongoing care. And of course, pandemics like COVID-19 lead to sudden spikes in healthcare demand. There are socioeconomic influences like income levels. People with higher income are often more likely to use healthcare services and education and healthcare literacy. People who are better informed tend to seek preventative healthcare more. There are cultural and behavioral factors, so cultural attitudes can have a big impact on whether or not people seek medical help. Insurance coverage and out-of-pocket costs. High out-of-pocket costs can deter people from seeking necessary care, where services that are free at the point of use tend to increase.